one and a half miles to go for Danica Patrick. Could history be made? Boys, move over. The lady is coming through. Danica Patrick wins a twin ring Motegi. It's a long time coming. <laughs> Finally. This is the best day of my life. I've dreamt about it. When you only got a hundred years to live And less than 24 hours after that historic moment, we'll turn another page of history on the streets of Long Beach as the Queen Mary sits in the background just yards away from the 1.9 mile street circuit and the best seats in the house in the condominiums around the streets of Long Beach. And we welcome you to the 34th running of the Toyota Grand Prix of Long Beach. And hello again, everybody. I'm Marty Reed, alongside Scott Goodyear. And I don't know about you, but we're still trying to catch our breath from what happened last night over in Japan. Danica Patrick not only has stood the motorsports world on its ear, she stood all of sports on its ear. Marty, a wonderful job. She won her first race after 50 tries, and she beat Elio Castroneves, a two-time Indy 500 winner across the line, and Scott Dixon, who won the championship in 2003. She got to stand on the top of the podium, and not since the burst on the scene in 2005 when she led laps at the Indianapolis 500. Everybody has expected her to win. It's taken her a long time, but I bet you her confidence is so high right now, she just wants to go out and do it again. Oh, it has been the buzz here in Long Beach ever since the word spread late last night, and we had the lucky part. We were here calling the race from Long Beach. Our Jack Root literally has just landed less than an hour ago before we went on the air. And here's his journey, 65 miles by helicopter down to Narita Airport. Then he jumps on a Singapore Airlines jet, gets him all the way to Los Angeles. Then another helicopter brought him here to Long Beach. And like I said, he literally just got here about an hour ago. And Jack, first off, you did a great job covering all of pit lane. That seemed like you were everywhere. And it looks like you're still none the worse for wear it's easy guys when you consider the fact that I got a chance to witness history America got to witness it the world got to witness it but where do you put it in the sports perspective all the way over on the plane back here to Long Beach I thought about Danica Patrick's victory I would say it's kind of like well there is no comparison but if you want to make a reach it would be like Sue Bird scoring the winning shot in the NBA championships, the NBA, not the WNBA. It would be like a great golfer like Annika Sorenstam winning in the Masters, not in the LPGA Masters, but in the men's Masters golf. But that's where women and men are separated. In motorsports, they're not. Now, when I spoke to Danica just before she strapped herself in that race car, we talked an awful lot, and you've talked to her as well. That monkey on her back about winning a race, a major IndyCar race, was beginning to weigh heavily upon her. But at Japan, that weight was released. Now, on the way over, I had the good fortune of flying back with Kevin uh, Savary and Michael Andretti. And Michael told me the last word she spoke to Danica before he left Motegi was a reminder that this is just the beginning. He said, Danica, you've got to keep your eyes focused on the prize. The prize is the next victory, and that prize should come your way come Kansas. And then he reminded her, too, you remember, you led your first laps in your career at the Indianapolis 500. And he smiled, and she says, I think Danica got it, guys. Absolutely, and uh, ticket sales uh, go on Monday morning for Kansas. I think the phone's going to be a little bit busy. Think about this. The IndyCar Series has unification back in March. Then just two weeks ago, a 19-year-old named Graham Rahal, a second-generation driver, wins his first race, and then Danica last night. Let's take you back just two weeks ago as, boy, the momentum for this series is just building. The hardiest of race fans trying to wait out Mother Nature and get this second event of the 2008 season underway. As a parent, I'm uh, cheering Graham on. It's, it's great that he could still be a dad, and he's not afraid to be a dad. The Honda Grand Prix of St. Petersburg underway. Graham Rahal making contact with Will Power. This was some pretty good contact here. The 06 of Graham Rahal, the second generation on the streets of St. Petersburg. Graham Rahal grabbed the lead. He got to the inside of Ryan Hunter Ray. Can this young man win his first IndyCar race today? Bobby Rahal's got a smile on his face. We have a new star in IndyCar racing. He's only a teenager.
Bobby, describe the feelings of a father to see his son do what you did so many times. Fantastic. You know, uh, all I can say is um, I, I think this is the first of many. What are you going to say to him when you get to victory lane? I don't know. <laughs> say hello to a new star in the IndyCar Series. I've caught up with Graham Rahal down here. Graham, the last time you and I spoke, you were climbing out of your car to celebrate your very first victory. What's the coolest thing you got to do this week because of your big win? Well, I think Letterman's the coolest thing for anybody and to, uh, to be a part of it. I mean, obviously, I've known Dave for a long time through Dad and the team, but, uh, you know, to be on the show, it's pretty cool. I think it's been a busy week, but that was definitely the, uh, the highlight. Now, we all have seen the photos of your dad giving you that now infamous hug in Victory Lane. What did he say to you after your win? Well, I mean, I think, you know, he just came off, and I think he was just, uh, he was kind of choked up a little, you know. So he said, great job, you know, you know, nice job keeping your head up and all that stuff. But, I mean, you know, what else can he say? You know, he, I think he was kind of lost for words at the time. So it was tough for us both, that's for sure. Last weekend, you made history becoming the youngest driver ever to win an IndyCar race. Last night, Danica Patrick made history becoming the first female. What do your two wins mean to the future of IndyCar racing, the future of motorsports in general? Well, surely it's, uh, you know, it's one of those things that's it's timely for the series because suddenly now you've got one series and, you know, I win last or two weekends ago and then Danica does it last night. I think it's, uh, it's huge for the interest in the series and I think that... Uh, you know, a lot of people look at us as the future. So, you know, now they, uh, that, that we've both gotten a win off our shoulders, I think that it, uh, it certainly looks exciting for the fans. And certainly, although maybe it wasn't the prettiest fashion last night, she still did it. Well, good luck today, Graham. Thank you. Jamie Little. And for the first time, Justin Wilson will lead the field to the green flag here at Long Beach. So, Justin, this is a unique weekend for you. First time as a dad, your baby girl born eight days ago. How will that change the way you approach race day? To be honest, it doesn't change a thing. I'm still trying to do everything I can to, to go out there and drive my best, win races. But uh, it's pretty cool. Once you get back and you take the helmet off and you, know, you see the pictures that my wife, Julie, is just sent me it's it's cool so uh, I'm really enjoying being a dad and you know really enjoy driving that McDonald's car because uh, so far it's been very quick this weekend it's it's great to, to come here and have one last go a lot of great history with this car this team Sebastian Bourdais won here the last three years you're leading the field to the green flag what do you think your chances are for getting your first victory here in Long Beach well like I said I think the car's great so I'm optimistic that we'll have a good shot and the standing starts are a little bit hit and miss you know you Depends how much uh, throttle you have for how long, it affects how much power you have with the turbo. So you can either get a great start or spin the wheels. And I want to get to turn one first. If I can't do that, then I'll just do whatever I can. But uh, as I said, the car's fast, so we'll get there one way or another. All right, Justin Wilson looking for his first victory here in Long Beach. Marty? Thanks, Jamie. And obviously, we'll be closing a chapter here at Long Beach, and that means we have two different types of drivers here, those that are going on and those that may not. Well, this race has always been the crown jewel on the circuit, and drivers want to win this event. But there's drivers here that are going for points in the overall championship, and there's drivers here that want to win the race so they can get a ride for the rest of the season. One of those drivers is with Jack Aroot right now. Guys, one of the drivers that may have a little different agenda today is right with me, Paul Tracy. Paul, right now, no ride on the IndyCar side of things, so how does that change the way you drive today? Well, I don't think it really changes anything. It's been a frustrating off-season for us, and I just want to thank uh, Forsyth for the tremendous uh, time I've had with him. We've, I've had the best times of my career with him, and this is going to be the last race that I drive for, for Jerry. And you know, I've been lucky enough to have a lot of great sponsors and the sponsor of Monster this weekend. And you know, I kind of grew my beard like Brett Favre. You know, this could be my last last race, game day. So it's uh, you know, I hope it doesn't end up that way. But uh, I'm pretty happy with how I've, how I've done in my career. Marty, the last time I checked, Brett Favre grew that beard about three years before he retired, so who knows, we may still see him in some major racing events in IndyCar. Great analogy, Jack, and take a look at the parade of drivers. See that man back there? Jimmy Vassar, the winner here in 96. It'll be his 16th start at Long Beach when we come back.